So we're going to be looking at ideal gases and these are gases that obey the gas laws perfectly. The first gas law you need to know is Boyle's law and this says for a fixed mass of gas the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume provided that the temperature is constant. And what this means is that if the pressure is doubled then the volume will be halved. And we can express this mathematically where we can say that the pressure of the gas is proportional to 1 divided by the volume of the gas or the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. What that means is that if we take the product of the pressure and volume of gas that will equal a constant. So if the pressure of a gas changes from initial value of P1 to a final value of P2 then the volume will change from a value of V1 to a final value of V2. And so what we can say because the product of P and V is a constant then P1 V1 will equal P2 V2 as they both equal the same constants. And just a reminder, this is, will only be true when we're looking at a fixed mass of gas and the temperature has been kept constant. Charles' law states that for a fixed mass of gas, the volume is directly proportional to the temperature, provided that the pressure is constant. So Charles', Charles law is looking at the relationship between volume and temperature of a gas. And what that means is, if the temperature of the gas is doubled, then the volume is also doubled. So how we can express that mathematically is volumes proportional to the temperature. But it's important to note here that the temperature is absolute temperature. That is temperature in kelvins, the SI unit of temperature, and not in degree C. And how we get the temperature in kelvins, well, we take our degree C and add 273 and that will give us the Kelvin value. So it's important that if they give you a value in degree C that you do convert the temperature into Kelvin. So going back to this expression, what this is telling us for Charles' law that if we take the volume and divide it by the temperature that will be a constant value. If the pressure is constant and we've kept this and we have the same mass of gas. So if the temperature is changed from T1 to T2, then the volume will also change from V1 to V2. And we can say because V divided by T equals a constant, then V1 divided by T1 will equal V2 divided by T2 as both of these will equal the same constant if the pressure has been kept constant and we've got a fixed mass of gas. The pressure law states that for a fixed mass of gas, the pressure is directly proportional to the temperature, provided that the volume is kept constant. So the pressure law is looking at the relationship between pressure and temperature of the gas. So what that means is if the temperature of the gas is doubled and the volume is kept constant, then the pressure is also going to be doubled. And again, a reminder, here the temperature is in kelvins, in absolute temperature. So we can express this mathematically, where the pressure is directly proportional to the temperature. So what the pressure law is saying is, that the pressure divided by temperature will equal a constant. And so if the temperature is changed from a value of T1 to a value of T2 and the volume has been kept constant, then the pressure will change from P1 to P2. And because P divided by T equals a constant, then we can say that P1 divided by T1 will equal P2 divided by T2 as both of these equal a constant when 
the volume has been kept constant and we're looking at a fixed mass of gas. The ideal gas law is a combination of the three gas laws. So if we combine these three laws together, we're going to get our pressure is directly proportional to the temperature divided by the volume. And you can see that if temperature is kept constant, then the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. If the volume is kept constant, then the pressure is directly proportional to the temperature. And if pressure is kept constant, then if we bring the V up here, you can see the volumes proportional to the temperature. And a reminder, this is true if we have a fixed mass of gas. So the ideal gas law says then, if we rearrange this, that pressure times volume divided by the temperature of the gas will equal a constant. So if we had a fixed mass of gas and it's pressure change from P1 to P2, and volume change from V1 to V2, and also the temperature change from T1 to T2, then we can say that P1 times V1 divided by T1 will equal P2 times V2 divided by T2, because both of these will equal the same constant. So the ideal gas law is saying that the product of pressure times volume is directly proportional to temperature for a fixed mass of gas. To, to get the ideal gas equation, we need to introduce a proportionality constant. And so if we're looking at a mole of gas, we can our proportionality constant will be R, which is the molar gas constant. And then we would say that PV equals NRT, where little n represents the number of moles. If instead we're looking at the number of molecules in the gas, then the proportionality constant is K, which is Boltzmann's constant, and that represents the gas constant for one molecule. And the equation will become PV equals capital N KT. So capital N being the number of molecules. So R, the molar gas constant, will have little n for the number of moles, and K, Boltzmann constant, will have big N, the number of molecules. And how I try to remember it is that you have more molecules in a gas than you have moles. So as, a, as N is a larger number, it's given a capital N for number of molecules. So the mole represents the amount of substance that contains Avogadro's number of atoms and molecules of that substance. And Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules per mole of substance. So one mole has Avogadro's number of atoms. And another term you need to know is molar mass, and that just means the mass of one mole of substance. And so because it represents the mass of one mole, a molar mass will contain Avogadro's numbers of atoms and molecules. So the molar mass is the mass number or the nuclear number in grams for a substance. So, for example, if we was to look at oxygen uh, gas and its molar mass, well, the mass number or nuclear number is 16. So, because there's two oxygen atoms to make a gas molecule, then to get the molar mass, it will be 2 times 16. So, it would be 32 grams. So, that means... 32 grams of oxygen gas will contain Avogadro's number of molecules because remember this is the molar mass and this is the mass of one mole of substance. So if we were to compare the molar mass of 
hydrogen gas, helium atoms and oxygen gas. Well, if we look at the molar mass, well, they'll contain the same number of atoms or molecules, which is Avogadro's number. But if we first look at hydrogen, because the mass number of hydrogen is 1, then the molar mass of hydrogen gas will be 2 grams. The mass number of helium is 4, so its molar mass will be 4 grams. And as we saw before, the molar mass of oxygen gas will be 32 grams. So what you can see is we are looking at a mole of hydrogen gas or helium atoms or oxygen gas molecules. They'll have the same number of atoms and molecules, but they have different molar masses.